Welcome to Swooper Troopers. I'm BK, and today I'm playing Boba Fett at Energy Conversion Lab versus Busterkins, who's playing Sabine Wren at ECL as well. Deck lists are found in the description. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Busterkins won the die roll, so he's on the initiative. His first action is to play Battlefield Marine. This is a vanilla 3-3, but it only costs two. So good. I play Crafty Smuggler as my first action. 2-2 that has a shield on it. He then activates Sabine Wren in the leader zone, so we both take one damage to our bases. I claim the initiative token. And with nothing left to do, Busterkins passes, so we go to the regroup phase. We draw our two cards, we both resource one, and then on to turn two. I want to get maximum value out of my crafty smuggler, so my first action is to attack his base with him. He goes to three damage on his base, and onto his action, he plays red three giving a raid one to all other heroic units. This thing's great. On my action, I look to counter red three by playing a seventh fleet defender. Three two in the air with a shield token, so I'm eyeballing that red three as a juicy target. Busterkin's action, he attacks me with his beefed up battlefield marine, bringing me to five. I claim the initiative, and then he activates Sabine Wren, leader ability once again, adding one more point of damage to both of us. Then he passes, and we draw our two, resource one each, and then go to turn three. For right this second, I'm feeling pretty good about my board position, and as my first action, I'll trade away a shield token for a whole red three, so that feels pretty good too. Red three, of course, dies, and it turns off that extra raid power from all of his heroic stuff. As a follow-up, he plays Wing Leader, adding two experience tokens to his Battlefield Marine, making it a 5-5, five five, and I don't really like that. So my action is to play Waylay. I'm gonna bounce the Battlefield Marine back to his hand. Returning a readied unit with upgrades on it to their owner's hand is pretty decent. And because an enemy unit left the field, I get to use my leader's ability to ready a resource. His next action is to activate Sabine in the leader zone once again, bringing me to seven and him to five. I attack with my crafty smuggler, making it an even game. His next action is to deploy Sabine, she comes out so fast. This can get carried away pretty quickly if I'm not careful. I'll claim the initiative, and Busterkin's next action is to attack with his leader unit, so he swings at my face, bringing me to 10 damage on my base. And seeing as I already took the initiative, it goes back to him for his next action, and he plays Metal Ceremony. Busterkin's would have preferred to have one or two more rebel targets for this. I mean, who wouldn't? But sometimes you just gotta advance the board state with what you got. We go to the regroup phase, we both draw, we both resource, and on to turn four. The fact that Wing Leader is a 2-1, it could trade up for my 7th Fleet Defender, so I'm gonna use that first to attack his base and get that value in before he could kill it. So he goes to 10 damage, and onto his action he plays Fleet Lieutenant. He looks at Sabine Wren, he'll have her smash into me with a hefty six points of damage flung at my base, bringing me to 16. Sabine has an uncanny ability to race very fast. I use my Energy Conversion Lab epic action to ambush out my Boba Fett. Sabine's a prime target for it, so on the attack he deals three damage to her because she's exhausted, and I'll deal three damage proper once they connect. Boba Fett takes three points of damage and still sticks around, so I'll take that any day. I then activate my leader Boba Fett and untap a resource. As I suspected, Busterkins does trade for my 7th Fleet Defender with his wing leader, and then my next action is to bring out Boba Fett. Busterkins had nothing left to do, so he claims the initiative token here. I don't like him with the initiative token, but I get free reign right now, so that's pretty cool. I'll attack him with my Boba Fett leader unit, bringing him to 14 and untapping two more resources. And then I'll ping him for two more with Crafty Smuggler. Sadly, I didn't have any effective cards to play at this time, so we just go to regroup phase. Draw two, we both resource one, and then on to turn five. With me being up on my board position, he plays an echo based defender to try to stem some of the bleeding. At this point in the game, I'm probably turning the corner. So I attack it with my Boba Fett to clear that off the board, so I could keep pressuring with my other two units. With no good trades, he attacks into my base, bringing me to 19, and then I play another 7th Fleet Defender as my follow-up. It probably was better for me to attack his base here with Boba Fett, but it's fine. He plays for a cause I believe in. It's got so much reach. He reveals the top four cards of his deck, and for each heroic symbol revealed, he'll deal damage to my base. So that's four damage, bringing me to 23. He gets to sculpt his draws with that, so he does. And onto my turn, I swing in with Boba Fett at his base, dealing four damage, bringing him to 20. 
He then claims the initiative, assessing that pinging me for one is going to put him into a bad spot. I then play No Good to Me Dead on his already exhausted but still a valid target fleet lieutenant, so that it will not ready during the regroup phase. I deal two more points of damage with my crafty smuggler. We go to regroup, draw two, I resource, and he does not. This game got super tight, and he drew into a steadfast battalion. So he uses his base's epic action to ambush it out, and he crashes a 7-7 into my crafty smuggler's shield. He regretted not using his fleet lieutenant to attack my crafty smuggler the turn prior. I attack his base with Boba Fett and knock him out for the first match. Good game, buddy. So this is a best of three video featuring sideboards. So here, Busterkins puts two Ewing reinforcements in, while I put two reinforcement walkers and two outmaneuvers in. Busterkins maintains the initiative token and kicks us off by playing a green squadron A-wing. I love that card. I play Greedo on my turn one. And in true Sabine Wren form, he activates his leader's ability, pinging us both one point of damage. I then claim the initiative as my action, and we both go to regroup. So once again, we're going to draw two, resource a card each, and then on to turn two. I'm in slightly an awkward position, so I decide to pass my action back to Busterkins. He plays an echo base defender, and I don't mind that because I'm going to play a shoot first on Greedo. This will have Greedo attack, getting plus one, plus oh, but he strikes first, so EBD dies and Greedo lives. I then get to activate Boba Fett's leader ability, untapping my resource, so it's like nothing ever happened. On his action, he attacks me with his A-Wing, bringing me to four points of damage. On my action, I play Resupply, and that immediately becomes a resource that's exhausted. He activates Sabine and deals us each one point of damage, then on to the regroup phase after I claim the initiative. We both draw, and resource, and on to turn three. My first action is to attack his base with Greedo, bringing it to five all. He then attacks me back, bringing me to eight with that sweet, sweet A-wing. Back to my action, I bring out Boba Fett as a leader unit. Thanks to resupply, it allows me to put on some early game pressure back on Sabine. He plays another Echo Base Defender, just to gum up the works for a little bit and stem some bleeding. But I have a power spike turn. I use ECL's epic action to ambush in my steadfast battalion. It gets plus two, plus two to itself, and I smash it into EBD, bringing him to nine in the process. He activates Sabine, dealing us both a point of damage, and I then attack with Boba Fett, getting him up to 14 damage. I feel pretty good about out aggroing the aggro deck, but Sabine can get really explosive really fast, so anything's possible. He deploys Sabine, and I claim the initiative. Afterwards, he then attacks my face, dealing three more points of damage, bringing me to 12. We both draw after he passes and resource a card each before moving to turn four. With Busterkins trying to race me down, I'm gonna attack into his Sabine here with my Steadfast Battalion, giving it plus two, plus two until the end of the phase. Uh, so it does actually stick around on the board. I just removed it early. Not a big deal though. He decides to ECL in his Battlefield Marine, giving it ambush and trading for my Greedo. Not a spot that he wants to be in, but again, he needs to stem the bleeding. My next action is to play another Greedo, and he scoffs at me as he crashes into my base with his Green Squadron A-Wing, bringing me to 15. I then attack back with my leader and bring him up to 20 points of damage. I get to untap a resource. He plays Fighters for Freedom, a little bit more reach, and he might be able to get there. I then claim the initiative, and he plays a Metal Ceremony, giving his Green Squadron A-Wing an experience token. Afterwards, he passes, so we regroup. I'll draw two, hoping for a shoot first, or maybe a surprise strike. We both resource, just in case. And then on my first action, I attack his base with Greedo, bringing him to 23. He then pushes his reach to the limit by playing Heroic Sacrifice. When it's played, it'll trigger his fighters for freedom, pinging me one. He then gets to attack with a plus two, plus oh, Green Squadron A-Wing, bringing me to 22 points of damage. He clearly wanted to send me a message as I take my next action and attack into his base with lethal damage from Boba Fett. So that'll make me the winner. Good game, buddy. A really tight game one. And game two, Busterkins ran out of gas a little bit early on, but we still had a ton of fun playing. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends.